Hey everyone, we are Acrovan Adventures, and in today's video, we are gonna show you how we patched the holes on our floor, built our subframe, and installed our nice vinyl flooring for our school bus. All right, the inside of the bus has been painted. It's nice and shiny white. Today, we're gonna take all the tape and the paper off of the bus, um, and then we're gonna patch all the holes in the floor. So, for the big holes in the floor, we got some galvanized sheet metal at Home Depot. Um, you could also use aluminum because neither will rust, supposedly. So we're gonna rivet these to the floor with some butyl tape. For any of the smaller holes, we've seen a lot of people do different things, but we are going to just use Gorilla Waterproof Tape. Um, this stuff is super sticky, it's really thick. We're gonna put it over all the holes. Shouldn't really be able to go anywhere and it shouldn't be able to leak, so hoping this works. Anywhere we think that we need a little bit extra, we also bought this waterproof ceiling spray, so we might spray on top of the tape a little bit, but I think either one will be fine and shouldn't be an issue. So since there's about easily over 100 holes in the floor, we decided we just wanna cover the whole strip um, at once to make it easier. So one long piece instead of doing you know, 50 individual pieces for each line of holes. This is really easy to use. All you need to do is cut it to the size that you need, round the edges so it's less likely to come off, and then peel off the sticky piece, put it down, hold pressure on for two minutes, and then you're good to go. It does say best performance is if you have pressure on it for 24 hours, so if you keep weight on it for 24 hours, um, we are not going to because we want to get the slum floor in today. So we're just going to hold pressure on as long as we can and then we're going to keep moving. Okay, so we have these pieces of galvanized sheet metal um, cut to the size a little bit bigger than our holes. I've drilled four holes in these. Um, what we're gonna do next is we have butyl tape on the bottom, um, which is gonna seal that edge. We're gonna drill four holes around the big hole, and then I'm gonna rivet them in. So these will be permanently attached. Um, butyl tape will make them waterproof, and that should be all we need to do. So these rivets are pretty simple. This is only like 20 bucks at Home Depot. Um, you just put it in there or on your hole. I'm gonna try and compress it a little bit. You just put this on there. And then all I gotta do is squeeze it till it cracks. And now it's there permanently. And then this part comes out. This is just throw away. And now you have a rivet.
see a lot of people using two by fours or two by threes to frame their floor. We chose to use a half inch piece of furring strip because we don't really think we need that much insulation and we didn't really want to add that much wood and cost to our build. Um, we did live in a van before this and we had half inch insulation. To be honest with you, I think it's going to be cold no matter how thick of insulation you use on the floor. So we went with the half inch again to save us a little height, a little money, and a little weight on the bus. putting our flooring into the bus today. Um, what we're doing is we have half inch furring strips. We are building kind of a little frame. Um, we're gonna put poly iso board between these um, slats. Then we're gonna put a layer of plywood on top. It's a little more than half an inch, a little less than three quarters of an inch. It's like something weird. But we think that um, a little more than half an inch plywood is gonna be thick enough to support our weight and things like that. And there's gonna be flooring on it. so. We're going to do that. We are not going to be screwing this subfloor through the frame of the bus. Um, the reason for that, we just patched all these holes. We saw that the screws get rusty over time. Um, so we're going to leave the floor floating, it's called. Um, with the weight of everything on it, there's no way it's going to move anywhere. And since it's a solid piece, where can it go? So we should be fine. But just to be safe, we're going to glue it down using some construction adhesive. So. We got the frame in, we're gonna just put a couple of strips of glue and then put some weight on it and it shouldn't go anywhere. All right, so we're gonna be using um, Loctite PL premium construction adhesive. Um, it's really similar to liquid nails if you're familiar with that. We picked this because it can be used in a wide range of temperatures and across a lot of different materials. So it's good for metal and plywood, which is what we're gonna be using. Um, so we're just gonna pop it down there and hope it sticks. Um, in case you're not familiar with it yet, this is a Craig jig. This is an awesome version where we can actually take it to go. It's really easy to use, but it creates pocket holes so that you can join two pieces of wood together, um, kind of drill in, and then those holes are kind of hidden, I'll call it. But they're really strong, really great joints. Um, this, I think, is the 520, but this is super great because you can like adjust your handle, you can put it on a table, you can put it vertical like whatever um, and it clamps your piece down so this is super great so 
We use it all the time. I'm gonna show you how it works. All right, so first you set your thickness. So this is a half inch. It's gonna be going into half inch material. So we have this set to a half inch. Then on your drill, you also have to make sure it's set to the right material thickness. It's also set to half inch. We're good to go. Um, then you just put your piece in and you clamp it down. And then you just drill it. Release it. And now I have two nice pocket holes. Perfect. So we're just going to do a bunch of them all the time. Just Craig jigging away. Here we go. Shaking again, so I'm doing. So we're getting ready to put our floor in. We um, have the wood, it's pretty tight against the walls, but just in case there's any gaps, we're gonna fill them with this great stuff, gaps and cracks. So basically all along the edge and anywhere I see a huge gap, we're gonna just spray this in there before we put the wood down. It'll expand, it'll kind of hold it in place, um, but also like somewhat waterproof it and also um, kind of seal it off from any drafts or anything like that. So we're going to be spraying this great stuff around the edges to seal it a little bit better for our insulation. All right, today we are installing our vinyl plank flooring. Um, we use this in our van. This is pretty easy to do. All it does is snap together. So pretty much just line it up against the wall. When we get to it, we're just going to put it under there and then you tap it together with the hammer. The instructions are right on the box, so it's not too hard, but this is waterproof flooring. It's really easy to put in. You don't have to secure it down. It just floats on top. Um, so it's pretty straightforward, really good stuff, and we're happy to see how it turns out. A couple of other things to keep in mind. This is on the instructions on the box, but one, you're supposed to get your flooring acclimated to the weather that you're installing it into. So for us, we just left it in the bus for a few days prior to the installation. Our temperature is going to change so much anyways. I don't know if that matters for us, but we'll follow the rules. Um, the second thing is that we're supposed to leave a little bit of space from the wall, so about a quarter inch. Um, if you can either buy specifically made shims at a store, or you can just cut a couple of pieces of wood to the same size. So we can use these and stick them in between the wall and the flooring along the way and that will give us the same spacing along the whole wall. The reason for that, I think, is because of temperature changes. It'll expand and contract a little bit. You don't want to lock it down or else you might get bowing and some bubbles in your floor. So that's why it floats and that's why we have a gap. Only other thing to keep in mind if you've never done a flooring is that when you do the rows, you need to stagger them a little bit. So if you line up the ends of every single board, you're gonna have these weird lines in your floor. You don't want to do that. You want them to be staggered. So first one can be one length, the next row has to be starting shorter, and then they'll all offset from there. We're going to install it, we're going to see how it goes. Wish us luck.
So here are some lessons learned from this video. When you're choosing how to build your subframe, it's important to make sure you know where the wood on top is going to go because if you have two sheets of plywood that are coming together, you need subfloor beneath both pieces so that you can screw each side into the subfloor. We recommend you do not screw the subfloor all the way through the metal of your bus body. If you just spent quite a long time patching all the holes in your floor, it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to put more in right when you finished. With that being said, some people do choose to do it. If you do that, certainly we recommend that you seal them uh, with silicone or something else underneath. But be aware, it can be very difficult to find all the screws once you've drilled through the floor. When you're installing your nice floor on the top, there's two things that you need to keep in mind. The first is you need to leave a quarter inch gap on all the walls so that it has a little bit of room to expand and contract in different temperatures. If you don't leave that room, you will see the floor start to bow a little bit if it starts to get hot and it expands. The second thing is as you get to the edge of your other wall, you are going to need this pry bar tool. You can get it at Home Depot. We'll link it in the description, but there's not really a good way for you to smack the pieces of wood together unless you have this tool to kind of pull when you get to the last row. Another important thing with your nice vinyl flooring is that you cannot hit it very hard with a hammer or it will break. We chose to use a piece of wood on the side of the vinyl flooring. That way when we hit with a hammer, we were hitting the wood and that in turn was a little bit softer on the vinyl flooring itself. Something else to keep in mind is that when you get a bunch of boxes of flooring, you do have to mix and match them throughout your entire build because the colors can vary slightly. And if the colors vary slightly from box to box and you do everything on one side with one box and then everything on the other with the second box, you are going to see a clear difference in color between one side of your bus and the other. If you mix them all together, you can't really see that and that's how the floor is supposed to be laid. When you're laying vinyl flooring, it's really important to make sure your seams don't line up with each other. That means that some of your pieces have to start at different increments so that you get the edges at different spots. With that being said, when you get to the end or the beginning of a row, it's important that you don't have a tiny little piece. Uh, the box recommends at least 8 inches. You can probably get away with a little less, but you want to make sure there's a solid overlap in the pieces. That's all we have for you in today's video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and the subscribe button below. Drop some comments, let us know what you thought of our floor installation. We do want to let you know that this is part 4 of a 4 part floor build series. In our other videos, we talk about do you really need to remove your school bus floor or can you use the factory one? We show you how we removed our factory floor as well as the handicap rails and we show you how we prepped and primed our floor for paint. So if any of those appeal to you, go check them out in the links below. We've included the links to all the tools that we've used in the description below, so if you're looking for anything, check them out there. Thanks for watching. We are Acrovan Adventures and we'll see you next time.